Okay, Saturday morning in the kingdom, and it's chilly willy out here. But I didn't dramatize it. I'm not wearing my toque or my winter pants, because it's not that chilly chilly. It's not a damn chilly. It's a chilly. Yeah, it's chilly. Cold. Ah, whatever. Okay, today, this morning, it was plus 5 degrees Celsius, but feels like plus 4. That's chilly. On the Oyo scale, plus 41 Fahrenheit, but feels like my plus 39 Oh, wait, the 39 Chevy's over there. Hook to the water trailer. All right. So today we have no milk in Whoville till later. Yes, the staff went shopping yesterday and didn't get me my gallon of milk. See, I'm Canadian and I call it a gallon of milk, not four liters, because I'm old school. It was 1979 when we switched over to metric, but we had already learned a lot of the imperial measurements, so we still call it a gallon of milk. So the freight didn't come yesterday, which is Friday. So Johnny last night, instead of sitting on the couch, you know, enjoying the wife and the grandkids and relaxing and watching the TV, he had to go chase down the freight. Yes, he had to travel to go get the load. Yes, so then he'll be back. He would have been back late last night to, to grieve Rapids and then he'd be delivering it today. So the staff will be able to go get a smelk all because Johnny, you know, works some overtime. He's the company man to make sure we have our milk and beer. Yeah, and beer. Can't forget the beer. Yes, it's most important thing next to the milk, you know, of course, and the baby formula and Piet Pampers and all that. Who cares? All right. So today I got to work on the... Uh, oh train of thought was lost i was thinking about beer oh and boobies oh golly i better i better go ah okay now back to the program here regular schedule programming today we got to finish off the little log trader for the staff so we can go she can go out and test it she's cooking right now at the kit in her house in whoville to warm it up yes she planned it so she wasn't going to cook yesterday so today she's planned it to warm up the house because we seen the forecast that it was going to be chilly willy all right, so today I'm going to work on the 67 here because I have enough parts on the shelf in the house, so I want to make to clean off the shelf. So I'll work on this one while it's still fresh in my memory. Yes, the memory up here. Also, too, look what Sir Rodney sent with the last dog food order. Or yeah, look at that. Those are big bones. Yeah. So when I toss them to the dogs, they're, they're in shock. Like it's like four times as big as the regular ones, right? So they're in shock. Oh, our master must love us with that. No, Sir Rodney likes you guys because he sent the big ones. Yeah, size matters. Not outside the bedroom. Okay, let's scroll around. And there is no sun. Look at that. And it's calm as you can be. You can hear the people of Whoville with their hatred towards me. The squirrels in the trees chattering away to upset the dogs. And the helicopter at the airport already took off to wander around endlessly looking for mineral resources which will never be mined here. Like these guys are just smoking the drapes, eh? It's all stock pump and dump. Yes, once you realize that, and don't drink the Kool-Aid like I almost did. Life is a lot better. I wasted so much time with that stocks and exploration. In the end, what for? I'm happier now as a YouTuber and a published author. Yes, a published author. Living the good life at the end of the world, working on my stuff, not other people's stuff, and I don't get paid. Yes, and they wonder why I'm bitter towards them. Well, I don't get paid, so why would I even waste my time with you guys? Yes. The kingdom is looking good. Winter's coming and I think we're ready. Maybe kind of, sort of, but oh well. All right, we just made one full revolution of the earth. Yeah, it spins around in a circle. That's what we're told. All right. Okay, there we go. One complete revolution. Everybody's dizzy. Have a drink. Oh, here comes the boss. Okay, get the camera out and the dogs want to be on camera, which is good. These are the house dogs smiling for the camera. Right, Ash? Okay. All right. Over here, I took the door out of the uh, inventory room or the camera room, okay? Because I need a picture of the map of Manitoba. And now with the new rules of Amazon and the artificial intelligence of making books. So you can't just grab a... A map photo off the internet and put it in your book and call it good because then they'll ban you or bar your book or remove it so today I got smart with the printer and printed out the kingdom is here oh 
This, this I brought it outside for the natural light, which is working out good because it's not too sunny. So this is the kingdom up here, and that's the 300 kilometers of so-called road to Thompson where we go shopping. And then down here is the road all the way to Winnipeg where Sir Rodney lives. So we're ordering parts down here, and Sir Rodney has to send it all the way up here. And that's also too where the beer comes from. Yeah, let's get to the back to the important stuff. This is where the beer comes. And it's shipped all the way up to here. And gets to Thompson. And then it's switched over to the Lynn Lake Leaf Rapids truck. Or Grief Rapids. Oh, I'm saying words so people won't understand. Okay, the Whoville Grief Rapids truck. So it goes to Thompson then it's switched over. And Grief Rapids is right here. I don't know if we can see it here because I got the marker out. So that's where Johnny lives. So Johnny has to get the beer to here and then he takes it all the way to the rest of the way. Okay, so that gives you an idea. So hopefully we got some decent photos. If not, I'll carry this door around and take more pictures. Saturday morning in Whoville, as you can see off into the distance, it's still pretty foggy out there. It was worse when I got up. Now it's time to head inside and make breakfast, let the dogs out. Not sure what we'll be doing. I know I'm going to clean my bread pans out and I got to cook some of those plasma cutter beads to get them dried out so we can reuse them again. So let's get going. Saturday morning and I just came to the kingdom to pick up the beads from the plasma cutter so I can take them home and dry them out in the oven and hopefully we can get it working again. All right, time to take the beads out of the plasma cutter here. As you can see, there's a little drying system in the back over here. Not sure if my camera will pick it up. And then we set up all this down here. And now my dad's going to take this off so we can get the balls out. Or should I uh, say beads? beads? Well, they're just little balls anyways. It don't matter. Beads and balls are the same thing. Let's see what color they are and how they look. They'll look great to me. Oh, yeah, those guys are pretty pink. They're supposed to be blue. Nice shade of gray to me. Let's see if there's any moisture. Oh yeah, there's some moisture in there. Oh yeah, there's moisture. That is very pink. Now it's time to take them home and put them in the oven. Oh, that thing is in there. Oh, I'm stuck on there. Well, they're doing their job of getting the moisture out. Well, it doesn't help. We haven't checked them in how long? Well, 2018. Yeah, so that's pretty good. They kind of look like fish eggs. After breakfast, and now it's time to put the plasma cutter beads into the oven here to bake them because it says I can dry them out that way and get them back into working order. I put down some tin foil just in case they get stuck to the pan or something goes wrong, at least they're on tin foil. Let's put these guys in the oven for three hours at 275 and see what happens. Sorry about the background noise, I have my laundry going, but that's okay, hopefully you can hear me. These beads have only been in the oven about half an hour, and look at that, they are already changing back to blue. I was surprised when I opened up the oven just to check on them, but look at that. So we're going to put them back in here for another two and a half hours and keep a watch on them and see what happens. A few hours later and the plasma cutter beads are done. As you can see, they're a nice blue color. They dried up pretty good. I was surprised on how well they turned out because these guys are pretty old. Now when I go to the kingdom, I can grab the other beads and dry those guys out as well. Also doing this for the last couple hours warmed up my house because it's kind of chilly this morning, so that was nice. While the beads were cooking in the oven, I've been scrubbing down these bread pans. As you can see here, this one's still pretty dirty, but the one over here is slowly looking better. I'm going to let them soak for a bit and give them a good scrub again. Now it's time to head to the kingdom and pick up my dad's laundry. Just got back from the kingdom and I went and dropped off the big plasma cutter beads and I picked up the backups. As you can tell, these need to be baked too. They're not supposed to be pink. They're supposed to be blue like the Bud Light here. I also grabbed my dog treats and his laundry. Now let's head inside, let the dogs out and start laundry. Time to start the second round of plasma cutter beads. As you can see here, these guys are pretty pink. So we're going to throw them in the oven at 275 for about an hour or two, maybe three, depending on how bad these beads are. And we'll watch and see them change color. Hopefully I don't burn them. Also, my dad's being colorblind. He doesn't notice the difference. But when I brought the other bag back and they were blue, he noticed. 
Second batch of plasma cutter beads look a lot better. These are the ones that haven't been used yet. They were just the backup ones and you can already tell because these look a lot cleaner than those other pink ones that I converted back into the blue. These ones are a lot lighter so I'm going to put them back in for a bit longer and get the rest of this little bit of pink out of there and then I can bring them to the kingdom my dad can put them away for backups again. The bread pans are coming along nicely, as you can tell from this one compared to the other three. I'm getting there. I'm also using one of these little scrubby pads to get in the nooks and crannies and all those fun places. I gotta let this guy soak again after I'm done scraping all this down, and then I gotta do the other bread pan as well. So this is gonna take me a while and my hand's gonna hurt. Okay, the staff's setting up the GoPro on her helmet there so she can uh, go for a test drive with the log trader here. We're not sure if it's gonna make it. It, should, it could have been better, but we never thought it out. We never used the tape measure. We used the beverage to do all the thinking. All right, let's see what the staff can do. There she goes. Hopefully it comes back in one piece. Not a bunch of pieces. Oh, well, she'll find the first tree she can't go around. Made it to the kingdom and I'm all hooked up to the log trailer. Now it's time to go down the north trail and behind the house here and go see how it pulls and drags and if it gets hooked on anything, let's make sure it can even make it down the trail. I'll also be wearing the GoPro helmet thing here as you can see. I, I don't look good in this hat, believe me. I, I do not like this helmet but I wear it anyways because I have to. Made it onto the trail no problem. The log trailer actually fits down here. I haven't bumped into any trees yet. This is the stuff we'll be coming in here to pick up and get out of the way because that's technically on the trail and we don't want the dogs to get hurt or anything else. And we'll be picking up like these little pieces here and they'll all fit onto the trailer. So far so good. Let's get to the tight corner and see if we can get around it. The log trailer behind the quad seems to be having no trouble on this road. As you can tell, it's pretty bumpy in here, and this is one of the sharper corners I have to go around, and I'm not having any issues. Look at that. Get a better look from the other side for you guys. This is a hill. This all goes uphill. Like, when we're walking the dogs, we walk down it instead of walking up because it's just impossible. All this wood here will be put onto the log cart as well. Now let's get going to the next spot. came off the dog trails behind the kingdom. I'm very glad I didn't get caught up on anything because that would have been embarrassing. Now I'm on the cat train trail here that takes you back to the kingdom and if I follow this trail backwards I would get to the muskeg but I didn't want to go over there because I can't turn around yet with this trailer. I would look like Austin Powers in that movie where he's going like this in the hallway back and forth. That's embarrassing. Now it's time to head back to the kingdom.
Found a spot for the log trailer, put it inside the box car for now so it doesn't get rained on, because the last thing you want is the axles and all that to get wet in there and get rusted out. Didn't care about it for the last two years, but now that we're using it, we care. Just got back from the kingdom and I made sure to grab dog food since I got three hungry dogs at home and I also grabbed some of these SOS steel wool pads that way I can clean out my bread pans a lot easier. This stuff seems to be working and since my dad doesn't use it I figure I'd take it and give it a shot. Now it's time to head inside and let the dogs out so I can feed them. Made it back just in time for it to start raining out. You can't really tell but the ground is wet and so are my steps here so it is raining. I'm glad I made it back before it did because I am made of sugar and I will melt. After coffee, and as you can see, the bread pans are looking a lot better. Those guys need to soak some more so I can scrub them down, but my hands are hurting, so I'm going to take a break. This one looks the best right now, but I will get there. Even if I can just use one bread pan out of all these four, I would still be happy with that. If I can't, that's perfectly fine. I'll find another use for these guys. While my bread pan soak, I stepped out to do the weather for you guys. It's 15 degrees Celsius, which is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the same as yesterday. It was raining earlier, and the sun kind of came out for a bit, and now it's getting cloudy again. But I'm sure it's going to rain, because this is September weather actually happening in September, finally, instead of in June. For supper, I'm having poutine. The fries and the cheese were on sale at the store, so I figured I'd treat myself, and we already had the gravy at the house. Now it's time to eat supper and end my day. Okay, it's hard to believe it was one year ago today we got to say, not today, or this month or whatever, the first of this month. This is a 67, okay, and we got the 69 from Alberta, because the OYO idiots or whatever, the hotshot super sellers of Manitoba wouldn't sell me a a 67 or a Chevy truck in Manitoba so I bought a 69 Chevy in Alberta from a kingdom follower who has purchased all my books okay so when we got the truck here this one was running the 67 we got it running but we couldn't get any brakes because it sat too long so the easiest way to do it was to get rid of the proportioning valve when we put this on and we knew the back brakes had to be beat off with a hammer and got bent so we just blocked off the back so that's how we were able to drive around and have fun so now it looks like i'm not even going to waste my time with proportioning valves because in the hot rod world you just need you just can run drum brakes to drum brakes or whatever they call it so this is the front line it goes to the front brakes the back brakes are there so i'll dress this up and make it a little nice and tight and looking pretty because i did that in a hurry or whatever last year because i couldn't get the brakes to work which was frustrating all right over here okay we got everything laid out here and of course the jack handles in the road okay so we can do a production run we know we can put the wheel cylinders in with the flex hose already on we got the copper washer on we got the the bleeder screws all never seized and everything the front brake uh, hardware is all laid out and we got the short pads or uh yeah pads i guess they're called yeah, the short braking linings here and the back ones have the long lining okay all right we'll try and walk across to the other side of the table because you guys need your exercise we didn't get much exercise yesterday when we were working hard on that trailer okay over here we have the master cylinder we bench bleed them okay and of course i'm not organized but there's the little hoses here that uh how would you say go in or whatever we'll do a complete demonstration so people understand okay and here we got everything laid out to make another bypass or the steel line that goes down to the brake so we're bypassing that uh, uh proportioning valve oh these lips need some vodka also too it's a learning curve for me so we'll share it with you we buy everything through fairview fittings through sir rodney fairview fittings is a canadian uh fitting store they have an excellent catalog, all the details and everything. And their numbering system is very simple. It's Sesame Street numbering, so it's very easy to figure out. As you notice, the bigger the thread size has the same hole, okay? So anytime you play with master cylinders, okay, we keep this totally separate with the Fairview fitting numbers. Oh, can you guys read upside down? There, there, you guys can read now if I focus the camera all right so here we have here we have to make it so we have a big thread small hole big thread small hole okay so that's what they call i don't know what their official call to where we call a master cylinder fittings because they go on the master cylinder right here okay so we're going to make some fittings up and then we'll do a 
brake bleed on the uh, or a bench bleed on the master cylinder to show the world how not to do it okay just about coffee time in the kingdom and i want to get this blood or bleeding or blood or the air bubbles removed okay so i got my uh proportioning valve bypass or lines or whatever i got these ready to block off the master cylinder because it's going to be dripping when i work on it these are the extra porthole bleeder thingy me bobs okay so over here is your master cylinder and we're going to bench bleed it these are the black thingy me bobs that go in there I overfilled the reservoir because I dumped out, I wanted to empty the four liter or gallon jug of uh, brake fluid, okay? But I got my other ones here, the smaller ones. All right, use the level, make sure it's level because this whole exercise today on bleeding the master cylinder, bench bleeding it, is about air bubbles, okay? Air rises to the top, so you have to be level. All right, let's see if we can do a switch here. Oh, also two. Before you even fluid anything up, use your feeler gauge thingy here. Stick it in here and make sure it matches the other one. Because if this is a different hole length, and then your rod isn't adjustable on the pedal, you got a problem. Yeah, it's just like when you said I do. Okay, let's see if we can do a push here. We have air bubbles coming out of the hoses. Okay, oh, 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 there we go. That's what we want. We want air. I'll try and turn this way so you guys can see a glare. So what we're doing is pushing the air through. Ooh, you can even hear it. Just bubbling away there. Oops. <laughs> I'm moving my whole body to push on it, okay? All right. But that's the whole idea is you want these air bubbles to come out. Just give it a little pushy-pushy like that, and that's what you want. You want that to come out, okay? So we'll do this before coffee and then come back and we'll see how much air has risen out. I don't know if that worked out. If not, have a drink. Okay, after coffee in the kingdom, let's see what we got for bubbles. I let it sit over, but also too, when I was done recording, I pushed a lot of bubbles through. You're going to have some glare here, which is okay. Okay, change it this way. I don't know. All right, do you have any bubbles? I don't see any bubbles. Okay. We're good to go. Let's put it on the truck and then call it a day and go drink more beer. Because it's tasting pretty good today. Okay, we're quitting early because we can't do any more. We gotta jack the truck up, pop these wheels off to start installing parts. So that's kind of pointless. Let's go drink some beer, or write a book, or work on the book for uh, income in the future. Because you gotta remember the stories I wrote in 2003, the Cat Train newsletter. That book is 20 years old and it's still drawing me money. So anything I write today, when I'm in my diaper at the old folks home, I'll still be getting an income, which the staff will spend foolishly. All right, so we got the brake, uh, brake lines made to run or run without the proportioning valve that never worked. On both trucks, we couldn't get the brakes to bleed up, so we went for that way, and I think it's a lot smarter, safer, less things to go wrong in today's world. All right, let's go check on the flags. Okay, close enough to five o'clock. We're quitting early today to go write a book. Yes, write a book. Play with pictures that I took this morning when it was overcast, cloudy, and everything. The staff had a good day. All right, just look at that. The flags are limp. Okay, the 69 is parked out here. So everybody gets confused. The staff did promise me fish today because Saturday is fish day. So she's got the catch of the day. Oh, wow, what a treat that is. Captain Highliner, I think it is. And also, too... She really treating me Heinz tartar sauce. So instead of me taking mayo and mixing mustard with it to make a beautiful color of gray, and we're gonna try the tartar sauce, tartar. All right, let's go drink some beer. Oh, let's go walk the dogs. We'll drink some more beer and we'll make a video. Talk to you later.